Welcome to my free classes on general automotive maintenance and repair. Um, this lesson is going to be on the fuel system. We'll start out with the, the carburetor. This is a primitive diagram of a carburetor. It shows basically how all carburetors function. The primary uh, feature in a carburetor is going to be a venturi. That's going to be this narrow area between here and here. When air accelerates through a venturi, it creates a vacuum. That vacuum then draws fuel from the float bowl through a jet into the venturi. Um, so using the amount of, the more air that you flow through the venturi, the more vacuum it creates and the more fuel that flows into the carburetor. Over here we have the float bowl and a float. That's what keeps the fuel level just at this line right here. If the fuel level was any higher, it would cause the vehicle to flood. And if it was lower, it would cause the vehicle to run lean or not get enough fuel. Uh, the fuel inlet is going to be here. Fuel comes in here through a needle valve. And then the float turns the fuel on and off to keep the level at the correct level. Down here we have a throttle valve. This is connected directly to linkage to your foot pedal. As you depress the throttle, this, this valve would go from this position to down here and be open, or when you release, it'll close down. This controls the speed of the engine. Um, now over here, we'll move to an actual carburetor. This is a more modern Holley carburetor. Uh, again, we have a Venturi right here. I'm going to open the throttle so you can see it a little better. Now you can see this is the Venturi, the smaller area right here. I'll turn the carburetor around. We'll show you the throttle plates. So these are throttle plates. As they open up, you can see that the diameter of this is clearly larger than the diameter on this side. And this is where the Venturi is. Now we'll go into the float bowl. Here's the float bowl for this vehicle. Fuel inlet is right here. The fuel needle rod, or the metering needle and seat is right here. This is the float. With the, with the fuel level full, you can see that with the float up, the fuel level is right here on, along this thing. Now we're going to go to the uh, where the fuel enters the carburetor through a jet. This is a jet. On this side, the jet is removed. You can, you can change the size of the jet, meaning how large the hole is in the center, to adjust the fuel level or the amount of fuel that goes into the engine based on its displacement. The fuel then goes through this passage straight up here and we're going to turn the carburetor up it comes over and goes through this uh, through the nozzle excuse me <laughs> through the nozzle where the venturi creates the vacuum and draws the fuel and then it goes down through the throttle plate enters the engine as a air fuel mixture um, I think that's it for uh, a carburetor and how it functions there is one other circuit called the idle circuit the idle circuit feeds fuel through this small screw right here. Again, the fuel is going to come through the main jet. It's going to come up through this passage, pass over, then come back down. There's another passage right here. It goes to this metering screw so we can adjust the mixture at idle. And then it's going to come out of a really small hole right here in the carburetor. That's going to be the idle circuit. Now, idle circuit meaning that when the engine is at idle speed or ex extremely low speeds, there's not enough air flowing past the venturi for the venturi to work, so the idle has to enter below the throttle plate where there's high manifold vacuum. In other words, the, there's very little pressure down here, so we're actually sucking the fuel through this hole again directly into the engine. That's the idle circuit. That's, that's how a carburetor works. Um, next, we're going to move on to more modern systems and fuel injection, and we'll describe how that works. More modern meaning typically vehicles built after the year 1986 and newer 
are going to have fuel injection on most vehicles. There are a few 87s and so on. But as a general rule, from 1986 and newer, almost all vehicles have fuel injection, which is a much more accurate way to meter the fuel. That's why cars are so much more efficient today and last so much longer. So we'll start with the diagram. This is a typical fuel injector. So we're gonna have a small filter here on the end. That's just a screen to stop any large debris from going into the filter, which could cause the nozzle. We're gonna have a, a spring in here. This is basically an electrical solenoid valve. Um, when it's activated, it's gonna open. And now this, this opens and closes in by milliseconds. So there's actually a pulsing voltage to this injector that causes it to spray fuel intermittently. The higher the pulse width, the more amount of on time there is. Then there's a, a plunger inside, which is basically the valve. And then we have a, a spray tip, which is to atomize the fuel. Um, now that we've described a basic injector, I'm gonna move over here. I have a, a setup with a full set of injectors. I'm gonna apply air pressure. This only has water in it, so it's not flammable. I'm gonna uh, hook this up, and I have a regulated pressure. I'm going to turn it up to just, typically this system is going to operate at 40 PSI. So I'm going to put it up to, there's, there's only 5 PSI. Now I'll demonstrate how much fuel is capable of coming out of here. If you watch this injector right here, it's going to spray fuel. So as you can see with that low a pressure, there's still a considerable amount of fuel. In this case, it's water, only because we don't want to be spraying fuel all over the shop. Now, I'm going to increase the pressure up to 40 PSI. I can now, I can shoot fuel all the way, or water in this case, all the way across the shop. It's actually hitting the ceiling from here. So, that's how a fuel injector works. So with the, uh, so when it's in the car and operating, that it would the on time was is only in milliseconds. So obviously it doesn't shoot a stream that far. And other types of fuel injectors will often create a, a cone shaped spray pattern rather than a direct stream. This particular set of injectors is out of a, a 5.2 liter Dodge pickup. Now I have some other components that are necessary for a fuel, uh, fuel injection system to work. This is a throttle body. So this, it looks a lot like a carburetor, but it's different. No fuel is gonna enter through here. This is the top side where the air will be entering. Now I'll turn it around. Here's the bottom. You can see this is a, only, only has two barrels as compared to the carburetor had four. You open it up, that's gonna allow the air to flow into the engine. It also has a couple of sensors on here to help the engine operate. This is a throttle position sensor. It's a variable resistor based on how far the throttle is open. It changes resistance. It tells the computer what throttle position you're in, which then adjusts the amount of fuel that's sprayed in the engine based on the input from this sensor. This sensor here is called a MAP sensor, which stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure. It basically, it senses the amount of vacuum in the engine. Now at, for example, at idle with the throttle closed, the amount of vacuum in the intake manifold is going to be, there's going to be a lot of vacuum, a lot of suction, around uh, 17 to 18 inches of mercury vacuum in the intake. And then at wide open throttle, with the throttle wide open, atmospheric pressure is going to be present because we're allowing all the air from the atmosphere to rush into the engine. So you're going to have near atmospheric pressure. So based on this sensor, this sensor, a coolant temperature sensor, which we'll show you on a vehicle here in a minute, it, and some oxygen sensors, it uses all this input into the computer to produce a pulse width modulated signal to the fuel injectors and control the fuel that's going into the engine. So there are a lot of components involved. This is a much more advanced and much better way to meter your fuel. That's why modern cars get so much better fuel economy and they last so much longer. This is a 1997 Mustang 3.8 liter V6.
Okay, now we're going to move over to the vehicle. I'm going to show you the a few remaining sensors that are used in the fuel injection system to calculate the injector pulse width. For one, we have a coolant temperature sensor. It's exactly what it does. It, it's a variable resistor. It's, a, it's an input to the computer. As coolant temperature changes, the resistance of this sensor changes, and the computer adjusts fuel trim or injector pulse width to correspond with engine temperature. Now we're going to move over here. On the other side, this vehicle uses a mass airflow sensor. It's mounted right here, just, just upstream of the air filter. This actually measures the volume of air going into the engine. It's a very key uh, device in the fuel injection system. Basically, if you have a set amount of air going into an engine, you're gonna need a set amount of fuel for it to be the proper mixture and burn. Almost all modern vehicles use a mass airflow sensor. It is not necessary. Some vehicles use a MAP sensor instead of this. They, they usually, they use one or the other or both. This vehicle only uses a mass airflow sensor. And over here, we have a intake air temperature sensor. That's used to calculate the air temperature coming in, as well as there's a barrel sensor, barometric pressure. Because barometric pressure and temperature affect the density of the air, which affect the air to fuel ratio and the trim. Again, all of these are inputs to the PCM to control injector pulse width. There's one other sensor we're going to show you underneath the vehicle. Uh, it's called an oxygen sensor. I'll explain that when I show it to you. Uh, we're going to lift this vehicle up and show you the, the oxygen sensor as well as some other fuel system components underneath the vehicle. Okay, now I'm going to show you the last component in the electronics of the fuel control system on a fuel injected vehicle. This component right here is called an oxygen sensor. This, this device is used to check the air fuel mixture in the exhaust gas coming out of the engine. This is an extremely critical component. This enables the computer to trim the fuel air mixture or the injector pulse width based on the emissions coming out of the engine. This, this device alone has uh, reduced pollution by over 50% coming out of vehicles and doubled their efficiency. Um, very critical component. This vehicle actually has two oxygen sensors, one over here that's difficult to see uh, one over here, and then it has catalytic converter. It has oxygen sensors after the catalytic converter, which would be here, and there's one on this side as well. Those are used to see if the catalytic converters are working properly. Now we're going to move to the back of the vehicle. We're going to show you where the fuel... We'll start at the beginning of the fuel system with the pump. This vehicle... Here's the fuel tank. This vehicle has a tank mounted fuel pump. It's an electric fuel pump immersed in fuel. It also has a fuel pickup sock or a, a screen inside the tank. That's to stop large debris from the fuel tank from entering the fuel pump and causing damage to the pump or getting further down the system. Now the fuel lines come in from right here. They come over and they go into the fuel filter. The fuel filter is this device right here. This is used to stop any contaminants from reaching the front of the vehicle to the fuel injectors, which could cause damage. And then the fuel lines come out of the fuel filter and head towards the front of the vehicle. That's the beginning of the fuel system. They go all the way down here, all the way up to the front. Those lines are going to then connect to the fuel injector rail and eventually to the injectors. It's all these lines right here. Some of those are brake lines. The large one right here, that's going to be a fuel feed line. The slightly smaller one, that's going to be a fuel return line. Now we're going to go to the air filtering system. The air needs to be filtered as well. We don't want any dirt going through the engine and causing damage to an engine. We're going to walk over here to this uh, 2006 Scion XB. The air filter on this vehicle, again, is... Uh, Excuse me. It's going to be located underneath this box. So we've actually demonstrated replacement of the air filter on this vehicle in a, in a previous video, but I'm going, to, I'm, going to I'm going to demonstrate that again right now. Okay, now we're going to go back to demonstrating how to check and the purpose of an air filter. Obviously, the air filter is to keep dirt and contaminants from entering the air system. I'm going to show you on this vehicle how to 
check or replace your air filter. We're gonna remove a clamp here. You always wanna make sure that a lot of air filters, you, you need to remove some items before you attempt to remove the filter. So I'm gonna pull this hose off. It comes right off. There are a couple clips down here. Pull up and out. Now here we have an air filter. I'm gonna pull it out of the vehicle. This is a cotton style air filter. It's in good condition. Um, no need to replace it at this time. We're gonna put it back in. Uh, if you look at the filter, it does have one corner that's slightly different. You need to make sure that corner of the filter is in the correct, uh, well, it actually says up and front. It's written on here. So we're gonna put this to the front and this side up, place it in here. Well, and I got it wrong. <laughs> it goes this way. Uh, if you look at the... It fits in there just like that. Again, you're going to put the back in. There are some notches back here. They're, they're going to go underneath. It's probably more difficult to see through a video. but And then just clamp these clips back on. Reinstall the air inlet hose. And then using a 10 millimeter, I'm using an electric impact. You can easily do this with a screwdriver. Doesn't need to be that tight, just down snug. Now, here's another demonstration of a, of a dirty air filter. If you look in here, I'm gonna just bang this on the side. You can see that lots of debris and dirt is falling out. A simple test would be to hold it up to fluorescent light and you, you can clearly see that this is dirty. Uh, if you were looking at this without such an intense light behind it, it would be clogged. This filter was really bad, it needed to be replaced. This is all part of the internal combustion process as, we, as we've demonstrated in a previous lesson. This is demonstrating how the air and fuel can be introduced into the engine for the internal combustion process in the auto cycle of events. Um, that concludes this lesson on uh, fuel systems. Thank you for watching.